Hello, I'm Bill Mobley, Chair of the Neurosciences Department at UCSD, and this is the next in a series of presentations that uh, speak about and to with, and with our faculty. And today I'm very pleased to have with me uh, Eric Veri. He's Associate Professor of Neurosciences and uh, an important new member of our department. And so, Eric, um, please tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what's up, what's going on? Well, thanks very much for the chance to, to uh, talk about uh, my work. Uh, it's a real privilege to be part of the neurosciences department here. Um, I'm actually uh, a Canadian-American. Mm -hmm. uh, did my uh, training in Canada where I did the MD-PhD program back in the 1980s. And my PhD work was in neurosciences and neurophysiology where I was studying uh, the function of the uh, balance system. And after doing my uh, general medical training in Canada, I was able, uh, had the great fortune of being able to do a fellowship with uh, Dr. Robert Balo at UCLA in the Department of Neurology there. And Dr. Balo is one of the great medical specialists on uh, inner ear disorders, both uh, balance disorders and in tinnitus. And so I had a wonderful year there with him seeing patients and really getting in deep on this vexing problem that patients have of uh, balance, imbalance, and dizziness. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is a common problem. It's a huge problem. Uh, literally millions of Americans every year uh, go to their doctor because of the complaint of dizziness. In mm -hmm. fact, it's the second most common uh, neurological condition after headache. Right. So we're talking about literally hundreds of thousands, really millions of Americans. Millions of people. Yeah. And it's a, it's a devastating problem because it really disrupts their ability to function. Absolutely. The, it can uh, uh, impair your ability to do a physical job, you know, where you have to reach up or climb up. And also it has important uh, consequences like mental impairment. If you're dizzy mm -hmm. off and on, that really makes it difficult to think. Mm -hmm. um, and furthermore, it's really a terribly unpleasant sense sensation. So many right. patients really live in fear right. of their uh, dizzy attacks. Right. So there's a, presumably there's several types that you are concerned about. Is, is there one type that is especially interesting to you? Well, um, you're right. There are several types, and that's... Uh, basically part of our problem. Mm -hmm. The first problem that uh, a physician has with a patient who comes is uh, when we see somebody who says they're dizzy is, well, what do you really mean? Right. What is your dizziness like? Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's a hard question for patients to answer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, luckily, some of them are very straightforward and we have really effective treatments for. Mm -hmm. uh, literally, I can cure people within minutes of some disorders with dizziness. Right. But others are much more uh, uh, unclear, harder for patients to describe. Mm -hmm. And really that's where I want to go with, um, with my uh, research in neurosciences is really understanding the sensation of motion and abnormal sensations of motion. Well, Eric has been really very effective in understanding this uh, vertigo problem. And so, Eric, what's new in this field? What, what can we look forward to? Well, what's really exciting, um, and forgive me for being excited, it's no, uh, uh, what's really great as a neuroscientist is that now we're seeing technologies that are usable in the real world. So instead of having to go to a special laboratory or a fancy uh, imaging center mm -hmm. to have activity of the brain measured, we now have systems that enable us to measure things while people are uh, interacting with computers, moving around in the world. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, when we're talking about the sensation of motion or motion sensation, having systems that enable us to measure brain activity while somebody is moving is critical. Right. So what do those look like? How, how complex are those? Well, um, as we know with uh, Moore's Law and miniaturization of computers, mm -hmm. uh, things are getting smaller and smaller. And so the mainstay technology that I'm using right now is, is what I call high density electroencephalography or EEG. Mm -hmm. Now EEG's been around for 80 years or more. Right. 
but it's always involved big racks of very cumbersome equipment, very sensitive electronics. Mm -hmm. And now, in contrast now with advances in electronics, literally in my handbag, I can carry my whole EEG system. Wow. And so what that means, of course, is that I can put it in a backpack on a patient while they move around. Mm -hmm. And these are incredibly sophisticated systems where we can measure electrical activity from the brain from hundreds of points. Mm -hmm. And then using um, uh, computer networks. So we've heard of cloud computing where mm -hmm. there is just all this computing technology available on the network. While well, we literally put our data into the cloud and have it processed by uh, clusters of computers and do incredibly sophisticated measurements that allow us to localize in the brain where motion activity, uh, the processing of the brain uh, looks after the sensation of motion. So is, is the imaging that you do using this high density EEG, yeah. is it of the brain perception of the vertigo or is it the primary sensory status, this primary sensory region if you will? Well, we can do both. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we've looked at the, uh, the primary sensory uh, region of the brain. Um, I, I often feel like the, uh, the ugly stepsister in Cinderella here. The vestibular sense isn't as fancy as hearing or vision, but of course it's very, very important, especially right. when you're dizzy. Right. And it turns out that uh, because of the problem of trying to record in motion, Identifying the motion sensitive part of the brain mm -hmm. uh, has been really hard, but we've been able to, uh, to pick this up with some of our recording systems. Right. And it's, that's really exciting. Um, in fact, and now we can bring the sensation of motion into the era of mapping where we know where vision is mapped in the brain, we know where hearing is mapped in the brain, we know where body sensation is mapped in the brain, even smell. Mm -hmm. But now we're getting to where we think we can map motion sensation in the brain. So if you can map it, yep. can you uh, modulate it? Can you do something to help patients really uh, uh, not uh, have to just live with vertigo, but somehow manage the vertigo? And, and, and that's again the excitement that we have. Mm. So um, with here at UCSD, we actually have uh, a whole series of efforts using virtual reality technology. Mm -hmm. And the neat thing about virtual reality is that I have control over motion of the world. Mm -hmm. So the conventional means of managing patients now with uh, motion sensation is to have them do f work with physical therapists. And a specialized physical therapist can do awesome um, improvement in a patient's persistent balance and dizzy sensation. Right. So what, um, what I hope to do with the advanced technologies, and we did in uh, research here at UCSD, was to look at how manipulating motion of the visual world could help patients. Mm -hmm. And essentially what we did was we put people into a virtual environment and because their balance system had been damaged and was slow, we slowed the world down for mm -hmm, them. Mm -hmm. So instead of having to try and run as hard as they could to catch up, we slowed the, vis the, the visual world down just so it was going just a little bit faster than their motion sensation was mm -hmm. uh, accomplishing. And what we did was allow them to recover that, uh, that small increment then we sped it up a little bit, mm. and we showed that by slowing the world down mm -hmm. and then speeding it up, that people we could see recovery uh, in patients. And um, so this was clinical recovery as well, not was, just in that's the right. so experiment. They, they felt better, but we also were able to measurably, uh, mm -hmm. uh, with measurement, show that their balance system was improving. Now, interestingly, if you or I, with a normal balance system, if we put us into a the virtu the slowed down virtual world, we our balance system would slow down. Yeah. But these patients, we slowed it down just enough so that that gave them a chance to catch up.
Very interesting. Yeah, so it was really exciting. So uh, what I hope to do with these brain markers of uh, motion sensation is to really identify, well, is this <clears throat> an abnormally slow system? Which way, which, in which movement is it going? So in other words, is it up and down in pitch, left and right in yaw? Mm -hmm. And we're identifying that in brain right now, the different planes of motion and how they can be differentially affected. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's really mm -hmm. exciting era with these mobile technologies and virtual reality that we can modify uh, motion sensation and really help patients. Mm -hmm. Very exciting, very uh, hopeful. So. Um, do you, th you imagine then that this new way of dealing with motion sickness with vertigo yes. um, is something that will be available to patients on a more on a broad scale soon? Well, th that, and again, that's the hope. So fortunately, I, I have, as you know, I have a personal interest in developing technologies. Right. And ha in fact, have worked in the past with uh, laboratories and companies, engineering companies, to build these systems. Right. And the exciting part, again, is that now they're literally available for a few hundred dollars. So my hope and expectation is that the multi-million dollar virtual reality systems that we do research on here at the university will ultimately be miniaturized into mm -hmm. something that a patient can take home. And very use. exciting, very exciting. Eric, thanks very much for your time. Very interesting and important work. Thank you very Thank much. You.